Here with us now is Democratic North Carolina Congresswoman. Welcome to the show, Congresswoman Kathy Manning. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Good morning. Let's dive into those numbers. Trump is at 49. Harris is at 48. Trump won in your state, both in 2016 and 2020. Talk to us about those kitchen table issues like income, inflation, health care, education, and how the impact will now turn out. So let me just say, while Trump won, he only won by 1.3% of the vote. So it was a razor-sharp razor uh, election, and the excitement that we are seeing across the state is unlike anything I have seen since Obama won in 2008 here in North Carolina. The issues that uh, Kamala Harris is, are talking about, the issues including affordability, education, making sure we have the good jobs and the training for those good jobs that we need across this state are really motivating people. But the biggest motivator of all, women's reproductive rights. I have talked to women across the district and across the state who are so worried about what is happening that, that because of the justices that Donald Trump put on the Supreme Court specifically to roll back women's reproductive rights. We now have abortion restrictions here in North Carolina for the first time in more than 50 years. And every woman that I talk about is concerned about the fact that she and her daughters have fewer rights than their mothers had. That is a huge issue. The mm -hmm. other thing that people are concerned about is getting care when you have a miscarriage, and that is being impacted by the terrible regulations that are being put in place across the country. Congresswoman, there's another headline coming out of your state just a few hours ago. RFK Jr. announced he is suing the North Carolina Elections Board. He wants his name off the ballot. What concerns you about this? You know, I, I'm just not paying much attention to RFK he, Jr. He, he's just trying to get attention wherever he can. What I'm focused on is making sure that we knock on those 4 million doors. That's our goal here in North Carolina. We've already knocked on more than 1.3 million doors. We've already, already registered more than 250,000 voters. I'm focusing on how we get a win for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls in the state of North Carolina. We also have other great Democratic candidates. Our gubernatorial candidate, Josh Stein, uh, my colleague, Jeff Jackson, who's running for attorney general, Mo Green, superintendent. We have great Democratic candidates up and down the ballot. I think all the work that's being done to get the voters out will help all of our good candidates. Speaking of those upcoming races, Congresswoman, you say you are not running again. You described it as ger gerrymandered congressional districts. Are you worried this could impact the presidential race come November? Well, no, because because the gerrymandering within this state, which was done with surgical precision to eliminate me and, and two of my Democratic colleagues, uh, will not impact the presidential election at all. Uh, and let me just say, I forgot to mention Allison Riggs, our Supreme North Carolina Supreme Court justice, who's so critically important, because what our a Republican-controlled state uh, General Assembly did to gerrymander our districts and uh, dismantle uh, districts that really were representative of uh, communities, uh, like-minded communities, was uh, actually absolutely horrific. And the people in my district are terribly upset that their votes will not matter in this election, in the, in the uh, congressional races. Of course, they will matter in the presidential. Congresswoman, what are your thoughts on our current political climate? I think it's safe to say this is something we haven't seen before. I've had people talking to me. In fact, yesterday I was at a car dealership. I had five people talk to me about their concerns about what's going on, the disagreement that's happening. And I reassured them that among my colleagues in Congress, there are good people uh, that, that are working hard together to get things done for the American people. The problem we have right now uh, is that we're looking at, if Donald Trump is reelected, we're looking at his plan, Trump's Project 2025, that would bring, uh, take us back many, many years. It would in, uh, enforce a national abortion ban. It would destroy things like the Department of Education. It would call for the uh, enhancement of presidential power. If people are concerned about the impact that uh, a Trump uh, presidency would have on their their lives, look no further than Project 2025, which is, lays out the plan that Trump would enact that would really take us back to a prior uh, a generation, many generations ago. And what he would do to this country would be devastating, would have far-reaching impacts.
Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.